it? Why do I have to screw up every opportunity? Okay, at least now the microphone appears to be working. <laughs> well, we're not going to be highlighting this, are we? <laughs> I'm sorry about this. It's really frustrating. <laughs> okay, we're on. We have audio. That was really, that was completely unnecessary. So, hey. Welcome. Um, we got there in the end. That was annoying. Got the right t-shirt on tonight. Got the NASA t-shirt on. Um, so tonight we're playing PC Engine games. And the PC Engine is a really weird little console. That it never really happened here in the UK. Um, I've been after PC Engine for ages. I was after trying to get a PC Engine for months. And um, they've always interested me because they're so small and so cute and um, they look like a fun thing to collect. But the weird thing is they're top dollar on eBay. Um, if you've got a, if you've got a like a boxed handsome PC engine, you're looking in the region of like 150 quid quite easily. Um, I paid 30 pounds for this from Japan because it was um, unable to test and had weird cables hanging out the side of it. So um, completely my jam, you know, just like probably doesn't work, has been hacked about with. Like, yeah, my people. So when it turned up, it was it was yellow, really dirty. Yeah, I turn this light on. Is that going to help at all? Um, it was super dirty when it turned up and the plastic was quite yellowed. And um, it had three phono cables hanging out of the side where the RF cable is here. You can just see whoever did it like shaved a piece of plastic at the bottom to get the cable out. Because um, this is a this is a really early PC engine. This is the one that only has RF output. Um, this is a yeah, it's a six thousand one. So it's it's the it's the first gen. And um, as I say, I picked this one up really cheaply because it was unable to test and it was grot bags. So fixed it up, took the horrible composite video mod that someone had hard soldered to the motherboard. Like there are various points on the motherboard where you can get um, stereo audio and composite video out. And they had just shoved the cables out the side. And they, I mean, what they could have done is they could have brought it out the back. There's like an edge connector here at the back. Um, they could have brought it out of the back. Or they could have left well alone and spent $15 on this thing, which gives you RGB SCAR and component video out on a generic PC engine without you having to do anything. So I cleaned it up, corrected the motherboard, removed those cables, scrubbed it with oven cleaner, and um, it came out really nice. Um, along, with the, along with the controller, which is nearly the size of the goddamn console. Um, the weird thing is about the controller is that there is probably a metre and a half cable on it. Like, how small is the living room that this is designed for? And also, the connector for the for the for the joypad is gigantic. Look at the size of that. It's a it's like a PS2 e looking mini din. Look at the size of the connector, an absolute heifer. Um, I also own a PC Turbo Pad, which is the American um, joypad. It's quite handy because it has auto fire. Um, and a slightly weird D-pad, and a slightly not very nice D-pad. But that's the, that's the connector for the American one. We'll need this in a little bit. 
because there's one game I've got that requires you to be firing continuously. So let's plug it in like that. The size of that, the absolute unit of that joystick port. Um, the games for PC Engine come on these lovely little cards. They're called Who cards, HU cards. And um, originally they were designed um, when NEC first drew up plans to make their own um, games console. Um, the design went around a few people. And um, one of the ideas was you could you could have games on these things and play them in arcades as well. You could like have your high scores on these games and take these your games to an arcade and play them. Um, you may you may if you're in America you you know this is the Turbo Graphics 16. It's quite a lot. It's quite a lot bigger and. Um, and if you if you live in the UK and Europe, you probably never had one because they fizzled out before they really got here. Um, it's a sixty five oh two based machine. Well, it's an offshoot. It's a C. It's a sixty five C O eight chip. Um, so it's it's sort of it's the same chip that's in um, BBC Micros, Commodore sixty fours, um, Atari eight bits. Um, um, Nintendo Entertainment System is 6502, if I remember rightly. Um, so when it came out in America, called the Turbo Graphics 16, people were like, "Oh, it's 16-bit." It is not. It is definitely an 8-bit console. It's, if it helps you imagine it, it is slightly more powerful than a Master System, but not as powerful as a Mega Drive or a Genesis. It's sort of like it's it's in that spot there. But um, when it came out in 86, he said, trying to remember, I think it's 86, um, 87 in Japan it was, it was launched in. Um, this was the, this gave Nintendo a run for their money for a year in Japan. This was the games console everyone had. Um, when they considered launching it in the US, they were worried that the name PC Engine tested badly to American audiences. People didn't understand because it's a bit, a bit of a weird name for a games console. They were like, "Well, PC Engine is what an IBM thing, that kind of thing." So they rechristened it. But in rechristening it and redesigning the plastics, they also redesigned the motherboard because the the American Turbo Graphics is quite a big thing. It's about the size of like it's it's getting on for Master System size, and um, so they they took a while to redesign the motherboard so it fitted in this gap so they weren't just putting this motherboard in a huge box and that took a year and by then the Mega Drive, the Genesis had come out and so had the SNES and they missed their chance but hey enough waffle let's play some games we've got Parodia Star, Pacland really nice version of Pacland both the R-types for your serious po faced incredibly hard shooter maps. We've got um, New Zealand Story, Space Harrier, and Croquet. Japanese croquet game that I picked up for like three dollars. So that'd be fun. Um, so let's start with Pac-Man. Pac-Lam, sorry. You'll notice the games come in these lovely little sleeves, which blew to the thing. If you went out and brought a game, this is what you end up. This is what you ended up coming home with. Um, looks like a jewel case, isn't though? Because that um, super weird. But yeah, that's your jewel cases. But they are standard jewel cases. I've replaced both of these that were all scratched up and yellowed with nice clear ones. So they look new-ish. But anyway, so yeah. Game goes in there. Plonk. Little... Let me change the camera. Plonk. So yeah, little gate that stops the um, stops the card from coming out when you slide it. Like that. So hey, Parkland. 
Let me have my earpiece in, so I can hear if it's making some noise. It isn't. Good. Oh, yes it is. Let's turn pac down a little bit. Okay, this is a really weird port of this game, because you notice on the screen it says button control. And there are two buttons on the on the controller. Select and run. They actually mean start. But the way it's configured out of the box is really strange. Because what it's doing now is to, to run forward, you have to hold down a button. And to jump, you press up rather than running and jumping. So let's change that. Because you know, there's no way that that is sensible. Just make sure no one's trying to... Um... Nope, good. Right, okay, so we'll change that first. Here we go... Yes, we put it on lever control. Anyway, so Packland is... Um, this is actually a really good conversion, Packland. So it's a side scroller, starring everyone's favourite forty-something Pac-Man. get bonus if you're in the air when it freezes. I remember the video library my parents used to go to had a Packland arcade machine in the back. So it's so uh, Pac-Man's quite comfy for me. I was allowed to play on the machine while my dad chose a video. Um, and you know what? This is a really tidy conversion. I've played this a bit, and I can't see anything that's glaringly bad about the conversion. Of the fact I suck at it. So I was doing so well until I stopped doing really well. Now I have to remember how boots work. Yeah. See, now I have to watch out for the the ghosts in the airplanes. The before weren't a problem. Now. I'm. So you know what? Pac-Lang's comfy, and this is a really solid conversion of it. It was one of the videos Chinny did a, um, a roundup of a little while ago. Um, incidentally, if you don't follow Chinny Vision on YouTube, um, do, it's really good. He does really good videos on um, 
He does like comparison videos of oh, oh, so, um, comparison videos of the same game running on a whole bunch of different hardware. And um, yeah, his videos are really good. And yeah, he did a pack. He did a Packland um, comparison video a little while ago. And yes, um, the PC Engine comes out really well when you compare it to what was knocking around at the time. Um, oh, oh, I'm rubbish. Um, this is actually one of the better conversions. No, oh, come off it. Land's really good. Um, I enjoy Packland. I enjoy the arse out of Packland. I always have. But let's not dwell too long on a single game, even though it is one of my favourites. It's really weird. I got a YouTube comment a couple of days ago from the Atari Jaguar video asking me why I bother playing and collecting games that I don't like. Like the video with the the comment was just like. If if these games are shit, why are you collecting them? I'm missing the point. So, R Type. R Type is one of those games that um, you're either good at and enjoy or suck at and you don't like the game. I'm in the latter. I can completely see how R Type is great. I rubbish at it. Um, I used to work, when I first left college, I worked in a computer game shop for a while. And we had, a, we had an R-type cabinet in the basement of our, in, in our like basement showroom. Because we were very cool. Um, and it was the day I, the, I remember the day it got delivered because um, I tried to help them get it. it the shop is in a basement and um, I foolishly offered to help the guy unload it from his van and get it into the thing. And the, the machine nearly fell on me and I'm confident that if it had fallen on me I probably would be dead. Because having owned a couple of arcade cabinets, um, they weigh a lot. And when they're dropped on you from a reasonable height, they really are. So yeah, R-Type is a... <sighs> really hard... <laughs> shoot him up. Um... Like I say, I don't particularly care for our type. Um, I've never been a big scroll, scrolling shoot 'em up kind of guy. Um, they make me tense. They make me like really like <laughs> tense. Let's go, let's continue once, so you can at least try to see a bit of it. Um, But again, this is a really solid conversion. Um, it's done by Hudson Soft directly, the people who designed the hardware for the um, PC engine. So it's oh, so it's in with a good sniff of being decent. And yeah, comes on two cartridges. Spans two cartridges. But as I've said before, it's one of those games that if you if you suck at, it isn't our type's fault. It is your fault if you suck at our type. And I can totally respect that in a video game. Ugh. The idea of not, you know, the idea of not sucking. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, I just replay all of that. Okay, look, this is the last time I'm not playing this. I'm not playing this. I'm not going to replay this. Because in a minute, I'm going to play the antidote to games like this. Well, that was a big joke, then. Is that on the, um... Friend grab it. Also, I am wrecking this true bad pounding away at it. <laughs> nah, see, it's just... I find it too hard to be fun. Um, and yeah, I've had a conversation with a whole bunch of people about difficult video games, and I can see how people like difficult video games. I own it because it's considered a classic, but... Um, and also I could buy it cheap because it wasn't boxed. But yeah, the weird thing is, um, I paid pennies for these two on eBay, um, unable to test, which is catnip for me, unable to test. Um, I think I paid like $10 for the pair of them. I could easily turn these around on eBay for like $40, $50, no asset. But anyway, yeah, that's our type, which is a, a scrolling shoot -em up. And Konami had their own series, um, very similar to our type, called Darius. And, um, can we crash on boot? Here we have. Hey, level consoles. So yeah, they have a they have a series of games called Darius, which is a, a very similar side-scrolling shoot 'em up type of fact. Ahoy, hoy, hi. Um, so as a antidote to all of the super serious ones, Konami came out with a very silly parody of it called Parodius, and this is one of them. This is Parodius Dar for the PC Engine, and it's silly. It is very silly, but it's fun. And I suck slightly less at this. Here we go, guys. What do you want to be? Obviously, you're going to be the penguin. I mean, why would you not? <laughs> Oh, I put it on normal. Oh no! <laughs> okay, which one shoot? That one shoot. I think the first time I played this was on a... I think the first time I played this was on a Sega Saturn. And I was unprepared for how silly it is. Proper console, yeah. Actual no fooling, genuine console. This isn't even one of the modern day remake consoles. This is your actual your actual console console. Don't worry though, I do have I, I do have at least one game that could be considered quite crap, so So we're gonna be doing fine. <laughs> Oh, come off it.
I think part of my problem with these games is I try to take everything in rather than just like maintaining the perimeter of things that are near me. Right, so at least we get to the mid-stage boss, which is um, a submarine made out of a cat, because, you know, obviously. <laughs> I love the little stamina you get just as the... Oh, yeah, the penguin. Yeah. Um, oh! Yeah, quite often it is games getting caught up in their own hubris that makes them appear ridiculous and unattractive, I think. Well, things like this, it's just trying to make you, it's just trying to make you have a good time. I was really disappointed that there isn't a, there isn't that I could find anyway, a version of Puzzle Bobble. It's one of my, it's one of my things that every console I own, I try to get a copy of Puzzle Bobble for. But this also suffers from, um, yeah, <laughs> this also um, suffers from one of the side-scrolling shoot 'em up things that always gets to me. That if you if you die, you 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 come back with a pea shooter. I mean, I completely understand that the trick is to not die, but. Um, Seems unfair. Yeah, there's there's the later level that is um, the boss is a spinning Vegas girl, like a feathers Vegas girl that um, does like a pirouette whilst giggling and like penguins fly out of her and that kind of thing. It's yeah. Um, you can have two players simultaneous, even though there is only one joystick port on this console. Um, you need a multi-tap to have that, but, um, you know. But yeah, I really love Perodius. Perodius just wants you to have fun and isn't punishing you. You still need to be okay at it. But yeah, isn't, isn't like, ah, why am I playing this game? So let's talk slightly deaf games then. Let's talk about the the PC Engine version of Space Harrier. Um, it wasn't done by Sega, it was licensed and converted by NEC. And um, NEC Avenue converted it. I don't know whether how many of you have seen Space Harrier in the arcade, but Space Harrier is amazing. Um, it's made by and runs on very similar hardware to Outrun, but it's crazy fast um, third person scrolling space shooter. Um, if it's easily emulatable, um, if you can't emulate it, the easy the the 
the most accurate version is the 32, the Genesis 32x version of it. Um, this, however, isn't super accurate, bless it. It tries, it tries real hard. Um, but it's one of those games where... It's one of those games where the conversion... There should have been a point in the conversion process where they just went, I'm not going to be able to get this game into it. Like, I've played the Spectrum ver I own this, owned the Spectrum version of this, I enthusiastically bought the Spectrum version of this with my paper round money. Um, I remember seeing the arcade version of this in a, um, a fairground amusement arcade in a holiday park, and it completely blew my mind. This is less mind-blowing, but... Speech. Hang on, I am playing the wrong... This is the... this is the game I need the American joypad for. Let me just plug it in, and in a couple of seconds you'll see what. Blank. Still works? Yep. Okay, good. There we go. That's much better. I mean, the sensation of speed from the arcade version is there. But it just can't shove the graphics around like it needs to. And for some reason it feels harder than the arcade version. I mean, I can complete the arcade version for you. Not on a single coin. But I can complete the arcade version reasonably, you know, reasonably easily. Because I played a lot of Space Hunter. Um, but yeah, this seems harder for some reason. This is one of the better 8-bit versions of Space Harrier. Um, I remember the the worst version, I think, is the Amstrad, the like the CPC one, because the enemies are wireframe. Um, I think I would prefer to play the Spectrum version than the Amstrad version. It's also weird how the American D-pad on this controller, how different it feels to the to the Japanese one I was playing on just now. This is much tighter. The the the, the D-pad action is much tighter. There's much less travel on the D-pad, and it feels like someone's done all the nuts up on this. But it also feels like for Space Harry, you don't have any um, inertia. You want a bit of like feeling of inertia from the joystick. Um, if you can find, there are there are YouTube videos of people playing the arcade version of Space Harrier. If you haven't seen Space Harrier in, in the arcade, um, have a go on it. It is amazing. It's the it's one of the last big, well not one of the last ones. It is a sprite scaling um, arcade board in the same in the same era and family as Outrun. Um, Endure Racer, Hang On, um, uh, and some other games that I forget about now. Um, 16 bit arcade Sega at the height of their height. But yeah, this was the first. This was the first arcade game I saw that had uh, that um, contained digital speech. In the arcade version, it booms out. There's like a great big speaker system built into all three of the cabinets that, you know, there was a stand-up, there was a, um, there was a hydraulic one, and there was like a, just a sit-up one. And I played it on the, the plain sit-up one, and there was a gigantic subwoofer in the bottom of it, and the arcade had cranked it up really loud, because it was, it was their pride and joy. And um, by God, did I put a lot of holiday money into that? Did I pile a lot of <laughs> of my of my saved up holiday money? Because what my parents would do is they would they we would go on holiday, and uh, quite often at these holiday parks and that kind of thing. And um, I would save money specifically to blow in amusement parks. Um, I mean, I'd have I'd have pocket money, and I'd have like odd job money and that kind of thing. But I would also deliberately save any silver coins I got 
you know, change from in shops and that kind of thing. I would stick in a pot, and I would take that pot with me on holiday. So I had money to play in in, in the arcades. It was it was cool because oh, because it means my parents got the evenings to themselves because they just fired me off to the amusement arcades. And, and um, I had a brilliant time playing all of the games that my Spectrum had no chance of being able to. Play. But you can see why I need an auto fire for this because if you're not firing continuously in Space Harry, you're dead. I think. See, those, those three things seem a lot harder on this version than the arcade. I also love the way this controller has a slow-mo feature, which just pauses the game for you. You put the slow-mo on. All it does is pause and unpause the game. I don't quite understand. I don't understand why you'd want that. It just makes every game hard and not fun to play. But yeah, I notice I'm, I'm playing it twice, in spite of the fact that I said I wouldn't play any game twice. But, um, but you'll have to indulge me, because it is legitimately my favourite game. Cool. So yeah, there have been, there have been worse worse conversions for Space Harrier, but there have also been better conversions. Yeah, pretty nice. And um can't let I have a jewel case for it. Please me as well. Well I'm gonna take that D-pad out because the that joystick out because I do not like the D-pad. Also if, even the American ones only got like even the, the American joypad only has this much cable on it. Only has like six, maybe eight feet of cable on it. I'm sure there's a logic behind it, but um, oh, there's a button on the back of this. There's a switch on the back of it. It's an actual switch. This joypad's coming apart later. Going to find out what that that does. Inquiring minds need to know. So. Let's briefly play the crap game. Let's have a look. What time have we got? 2043. Yeah, let's play the crap game. Let's play. Because, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be one of my streams if there wasn't at least one game that's a bit shit. This is Apparel Gateboard. Which, um. Okay, that's obnoxious, isn't it? Um, that is the famous Japanese lawn game, Croquet. Okay. Oh no. See, the problem is with a lot of PC, importing a lot of PC Engine games is that um, the vast majority of the games never came out in English-speaking countries. So, there are tons of really well-respected RPGs for this console. They're all in Japan. They're, they're all in Japanese. None of them got localized. I remember rightly that one is um Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, we need to get it through there. Yeah. Let's give it a little tap to there, surely. Yeah, set yourself up for an easy juice, so. eh? Like that. Oh, wait, hang on, that's another bug. I screwed up. Oh. 
<laughs> right. Here we go, team. Let's just wall up this one. Let's have this guy just absolutely dish it. What do you reckon? So what happens if that guy's ball is in the way? You can tell that I am not posh and I have never played croaker. Actually, that's not true. I have played croquet once, but I wasn't really paying attention because it was outside and, you know, not on the computer, so... <laughs> then get a maroon. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so if I do that, do they really punch it? Yes. See? Right, okay. Right, go on then, lad. Unblock that. going on. Oh, that's cool. It, it, it shows you the other people's board. That's spiffy. Did I do good then? Okay, board two, you are getting smashed. Yes, nice. Croquet. The throbbing... I don't know. I bought it for the lols. I bought this entirely for the for the giggles. It was like... It was like $3 or something, I think, on eBay. I am not mad. So, yeah. Um... Like I say, this ended up in in, in um, the US, going head to head with the uh, SNES and the Mega Drive, the Genesis, and um, the fight did not go well. It was not a success. They tried a couple of times to launch other consoles based on this. Um, there's been a, there is a CD add-on for this, like a, a another box this size. Because if we use the, um, if we use the CD thing, again, um, there's a CD player that sits at the side of it, the same size, and you end up with like a little bar between them. Um, and then it got embedded into a single piece console. And um, a few times NEC have come out with like variants of it. But yeah, this is the original. This is the original. And this is New Zealand Story. Or as, or as it was known in Japan, The New Zealand Story. Where you play a Kiwi. Um, Hellbent on Revenge. Um, no, not Hellbent on Revenge. You, you have to rescue your fellow Kiwis. Here we go. Right, am I the keys? This came out for nearly everything that plugs in the mains in the in the mid nineties. Um, I had it on the Atari ST. Um, But then I have a Tri ST because I'm one of the portraits. None of you immediate rubbish. Oops. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, you see, the story is one of those things, one of those games that loads of people really fondly remember. Correctly, because it was great. Now there's a warp here. Not that I've played loads of this. <laughs> well, it made clear that I haven't played absolutely tons of music story or anything. This is quite hard because you have to hold down you have to hold down the the, the jump key to gain altitude. Which is quite difficult when you you have to sort of like with the controller. If I remember rightly, this was a packing game for Commodore Amiga, for one of the Commodore Amiga um, deals they used to do. They used to, I don't know about elsewhere, but here in the UK they would do they would do like a, a game where you had like an Amiga or, or an S2, depending on which computer you bought. But it had it would come with games ready for you to play, so you could you know get it out on Christmas Day and just play a whole ton of games. As well, I'm sure there's a time. Now. Nah. Oh, come on, suck less, Andy. Um, I really fondly remember New Zealand Story. As I say, I had it on the ST. Um, but it was one of those games that was just available everywhere. Um, there was a, there were 8-bit versions of it. I remember uh, the Spectrum version being perfectly fine. Um, I never had the Commodore 64 version, but I do remember there being a 64 version of it. Um, so the vast majority of the 8-bits had it, all the 8-bits that mattered had it sort of thing. I don't think there was ever like a BBC micro version of it or, you know, a version for the Tatum Einstein. But there was certainly a version for the Spectrum, the 64, the Amstrad. Um, I'm sure there was an Amstrad version of it. Um, would there have been a, maybe been an Oric version? I can't remember. Um, and yeah, there was... ST Amiga, definitely Genesis. I don't know whether it ever came out on a Nintendo platform. We can find out. Um, New Zealand Storm. It came out for, yikes! It came out for the arcade, the Nintendo Entertainment System, Amiga, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, Atari ST, Sega Master System, Spectrum, Mega Drive, Genesis, PC Engine, FM Towns, X68000, and the Nintendo Virtual Console. So it's been ported to everything. Everything, really. Very nice. Yep. And um, yeah, I I remember buying it at least two or three times. The problem is now I want to get it on the um. Yeah, definitely. I wonder who did it. I wonder whether it's the same software house that did all of them.
It looks like it was Tato throughout. See, officially, this is part of the um, the same universe that Bubble Bobble and Rainbow Islands exists in. Um, they're all part of the the bu Bubble Bobble series. I really enjoyed Bubble Bobble, but I could never get on a Rainbow Island. Um, I could never get on with Rainbow Islands. Um, I wanted to, but the the making the rainbow and then jumping onto it rhythm, I could never get into it. But um, like a Twitter friend of mine, Mr. PSP, he he plays it. He he plays it really expertly. But um, I could never get on with it. I could never. I could never make that routine go. But I can pretty much. I can pretty much. Um, complete. Uh, bubble bubble without any major. Without any major spell. But yeah, so anyway, this is my PC engine. This is my PC engine collection. And. Um, I'm completely in love with the tiny little cards, um, the little, the little tiny piece of green plastic that pops out, so you can't pull the, so you can't pull the cards out while it's switched on. Someone's really designed that. Um, the weird thing is, let me undo it from the mains, and it's video cable. Actually, we take the trackpad out as well. Oh, it gets warm. Oh, it's quite dusty actually. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'll take this. I really dislike this. I really dislike this connector because it's like a big, like three, three-way IDE connector type thing. And I, this is a, um, this is an open source piece of hardware that people make. You can pick these up really cheap on eBay, and they give you um, component and composite video, stereo out, and RGB SCART. In a single, there's like a single op amp on there that does the conversion, and um, yeah, these are like 15, 15 quid or something like that. And it's like twenty dollars, and um, yeah, this is where the um, this is where the CD add-on would normally live, but fortunately, it it this contains video out as well. So, um, but yeah, I really dislike the way that connects. I don't like putting pressure on that connector. It never feels like it's hundred percent in. I'm gonna have to three D print something to cover that. I think because it bugs me slightly. Pass by on the side. Thanks, thanks NEC. Yeah, you know, good bit of design there. I think the only thing I don't like about this particular PC engine is the bottom of it is quite scratched up, and all of the the markings have faded. If I could, I'd like to get hold of a bottom, uh, like a new bottom of the PC engine, just to make this one completely cherry. But that's just me being weird, being a weird collector. So hey, thanks for coming, gang. That is that is my admittedly quite small, but also quite fun PC engine collection. Um, I was considering getting a EverDrive. You can get a board that lives in here that you put an SD card in and just loads images of the cartridges. But when I look through the list of the games that I don't have, the vast majority of the games that I don't own are I don't own because they are Japanese RPGs, and um, I can't read enough Japanese to be able to um, to be able to enjoy a, an RPG. Not I'm not a big RPGer. I think the last RPG I played was um, the last RPG I played seriously was. Fantasy Star 2 on the Genesis, so that kind of dates me. But yeah, what a cute little thing. What a really cute little console. It's adorable. Um, I have wanted one for ages, and I am really pleased that I've got a nice one. Um, or at least a, a not terrible one. Um, so hey, cheers for coming, gang. It's always nice to hear from you and speak to you about things that aren't bird related. <laughs> um, and we'll find a we'll find another console. I was thinking maybe ZX Spectrum next. I was thinking of like we've had we've had some um, Commodore sixty four action. I think maybe we could have, we could legitimately have some ZX Spectrums. But what I should do is just publish a big list of all the consoles that I I can connect to this. I can connect to Twitch, and we'll just we'll just pick one. So hey, cheers for coming, and I'll see you all again soon. So um. Bye for now, gang. Cheers.